Hey guys, welcome back to the Head Up Podcast. Today I'm joined by Josh, as always, and today we're joined by a very special guest, the Bulldogs' number one fan, Jason David. How's it going, Jason? Good. Thanks, guys, for having me. <laughs> no worries. Thank you for coming on. So yeah, we're All pretty right. much gonna we're just gonna pretty much talk to you about just Bulldogs. NRL season's obviously 49 days away. Very exciting. How are you feeling about that? Yeah. Very excited for the NRL season. Um, I've got my top four predictions in and why. And I think I know who's going to win the one spoon. I think I know why. But it's definitely going to be very exciting to see how this NRL season plays out. Especially with South today. We don't have Adam Reynolds. It's going to be interesting to see how they cope with that having him in, it, in yeah. their side this year. So who's your top yeah. four? Um, fourth, I've got Penrith. Uh, with Bert and the Penguin Junior gone, I think they will definitely will have to fill those holes in. And with Nathan Cleary's injury, if he's not going to be playing the first few rounds, I might have to fill in for they might have to find someone to fill in for him. Third and second, I'm testing between these two teams. I've got Roosters in third, Manly second, or Manly and Roosters. Um, with the Roosters, they somehow managed to finish in the top at with all those injuries and that's just just amazing and we've we all know how Manly started out last season four losses no wins they started out their wins and they just flew into the top four and I've got the prem no surprise but the minor premise of last year Melbourne I still think they'll go they'll think I think I'll still stay stay consistent yeah for sure Melbourne always seems to be on top you can't really back against them so no, you can't. They just seem to go to another, another level. They broke records last year again. Yeah. <laughs> they broke their own record. Like, yeah. So, obviously, Jason, yeah, the Bulldogs have the Cowboys in round one. So, that's a round one loss. How do you think they'll go after that? Uh, oh, because you're a Cowboy supporter. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man, but talk to him when you have eight premierships like the Bulldogs. Oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> look, it's going to be very interesting to see how the team works. When I know round two, we've got Broncos at home. Then round three, we've got Manly, Melbourne. Ooh. Then we've got Penrith and South. So they're going to be some challenging games. But I reckon we'll have the Cowboys and the Broncos. Mm. Our other podcast host, Liam. He was talking about it last week that he reckons you guys won't gel early on the season because you've got so many new players. What do you think about that? It takes time for a team to gel. And, and like, yes, I sort of agree, but eventually we'll gel and we'll just cruise. And don't forget, next year we've got kick and we've got Marnie coming. So we're going to be a bit of a force. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I honestly, if I'm being honest with you, I don't think the Bulldogs are making this day this year. But next year when they get a hooker, and kick out. <laughs> uh, I think they'll be top four for sure. Yeah, I reckon nine to twelve this year. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Nine so to you don't twelve. Back, you don't back them to make the eight. Look, they could, but it's asking too much. Like last year was shit house. Like I'm not being honest, it was really, really shit. Nine to twelve, I'll be happy if we make the finals. I'll be static, but I'm being real realistically nine to twelve. Yeah. One of my favorite things from you on your TikToks, it was like every week it'd be like a bad, bad game from Bulldogs, but you'd always say, I still back my team no matter what. And that's really what I appreciate. Like a lot of people like Liam um, swing from team to team. So, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, because I'm now 24 and I'll be going for Brooks for 24 years straight. Yeah. Die so since I've been born. Wow. Yeah. What? What what made you support the Bulldogs to start with? What what made you choose? My, my mom, my mom oh. told me from a very young age, just because your team's going crap, you keep supporting no matter what. So she's taught me from a very young age. Yeah. Oh man. So who's your favorite signing for this season? Obviously, you've got so many. Who would be your favorite? Adai kind of and um Burden. Yeah. Do you, Do you think yeah. Brent Naden is a very underrated signing for this year? Uh, he's got potential. He does have good potential, but sometimes he can play soft and he needs to learn to break those barriers, not listen to the media because the media can bring you all down and shit. He needs to learn just to listen to his team and his coach and then just, he'll just cruise. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How do you feel about, um, obviously, there's, when you 
gain people. You obviously have to lose people. How do you feel about Meany going to the Storm? Yeah, well, we all know Melbourne Storm are hogs anyway. They they wanted to hog Josh Hannah for another season, but they really didn't do much anyway. Um, but the Meany, he was a good player for us, but he is, he is definitely a loss. But we've got Matt Duffy. Hopefully, we'll pull his weight. And hopefully, Paul Ford will have no more of those bloody incidents. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously, um, the back three for the Bulldogs next year are all speedsters. But you lost Nick Kotrick, who brings the ball back hard. Who's going to do uh, that? Is that okay? Kotrick didn't really do much for us. Like, like he did like more at Canberra than he did for Canterbury. Oh, yeah. Yeah, agree. Yeah, of course. What do you thought? Like there was a bit of criticism about Trent Barrett last year. I just thought he was dealt a bad hand. What are your thoughts on him as a coach? There's a lot of like he said. Um, I was listening to um, and do you know how they had that whole rap thing at the end of the rounds on that Fox Fox Sports yeah, channel yeah. on the NRL? Yeah. yeah. Um, he was he was talking to like um these like to like Yvonne and that saying that like after their first win that. That it's it's not gonna be a quick fix if you're gonna if you're gonna fix it two or three years down the track you're gonna be in the exact same position that you're gonna be in like how they were last year so he's obviously doing his homework he's obviously seeing how he can fix the team up and if it's a quick fix like 2026 we could be in the exact same position as last year so he's trying to make sure that that doesn't happen again yeah yeah. So, obviously, the Bulldogs had their first win in a long time. Who was it? It was against Cronulla, right? 18-12, uh, we trailed. We led that game 18 at half time. I still remember that game. Yeah. How, how was that feeling, finally getting a win after so many losses? It felt good because um, with the Bulldogs, there's been, like, a lot of ups and downs, frustration um, to all my Bulldog supporters out there. Um since 2015, 2016, it's been gone downhill, but we've all stuck by them. They're going to come up again. we just got to believe in them. But it felt good to get that first win. The pressure definitely got relieved. And just the emotion of when they sang Ten the Victory song, that was good. Yeah. Probably one of my, like, I normally have, like, a favourite player for each team. Probably my favourite Bulldogs player would be Josh Jackson. I think he's like he's just an amazing leader for the side. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, he's been with the club since 2010, 2011, and he doesn't want to leave the club. He wants to be a one-man club. Yeah, I respect Josh Jackson so much. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, obviously, the 2014 grand final. I didn't want to bring it up, but obviously <laughs> yeah, you got, you had to. Yeah, got um, smacked up by Sal's. What was yeah, the feeling fair. after that? Uh, 30 to 6, I know the opening moments was Sam Burgess broke his cheekbone, the first tackle, James Graham. And then the yep. final try was Greg English going to join the Goanna. Look, that did hurt for a bit, but eventually I got over it. Yeah. yeah. But credit to South Sydney, they, they deserved the win. They were just on that day. We were just off that day. Teams, teams every round they have on and off days, just a part of our league. Yeah. What what was the thoughts in the week of the grand final? Did you think, oh, we're gonna win this? Did you have a good mindset? Um, or? any anything can happen. You know, I was pumped. I was excited. You know, I went to the, I went to the Panthers and Bulldogs final Premier final when we defeated Penrith and in World Rally sixteen. I was there, and I felt like excited and happy, but. I had a feeling that if it was either going to be a flogging or it's going to be a close one, but with Kenneper and South over the last few years, there have been some really good battles and very controversial battles. Like the Good Friday clash when the water bottles were thrown, that was yeah. controversial. Then you had um, when um, South Sydney defeated Canterbury in the Good Friday clash this year, 38 nil. They've had some very, very good, good clashes. And especially the one at um C bus when Lachlan Lewis had that brain snap at half time. That was <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting game. He did did it's... the old did the old John Cena takedown. Like, <laughs> <laughs> come on. Yeah. Come on. 
what did he do? Like sell sell the team's gear or something? What did he do? Yeah. No, so 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 what um so what um Cody Walker said was go back to the low grade, and that's what made Lockie oh, Wolf that did that tackle. Yeah. yeah, and then gave him the old five knuckle shuffle dust up. <laughs> but what made Lachlan Norris um get rid of what what Lachlan Norris did to make himself be out of the team was he sold a speak on eBay. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. When he, he sold, a, sold a what? A speaker. Oh yeah, like a team speaker or something, or like a sponsor one. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the NRL supply. Yeah, that's what um he um sold. And apparently, apparently he was like, it's all a joke. But I'm like, why would you do that for? You're the nephew of Wally Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. It's dumb. So dumb. Probably one of my... Oh, I remember like growing up in rugby league. So I'm only 19. And mm. I'd say when I was like maybe 10, 11 year, years old is when I first like got into league. And I remember this guy called Ben Barber who was just taking over the competition yeah, um, twenty twelve, we claimed the minor premiership with a forty two to ten win over the Roosters. I was at that game of Barbers. Um, my two best memories of Barber was when he scored that flippy try against some um, Newcastle. I don't know if you remember that one. Yeah, yeah. before the, the deep ball line. Yeah. yeah, and then and then the try against some um, Parramatta. Um, when he was dived in the corner, those were my probably two most favorite moments of him, but. Apart from that, he was a good player, but then 2013 is sort of spread out of control. All right. We've, we've talked a lot about Bulldogs. Let's talk yeah. a bit more about this season upcoming. Yeah. Who will jump, apart from the Bulldogs, who do you think will jump up the ladder the most and who will fall down the ladder the most? What team? I So for Wooner Spoons, I've got the Dragons and the Tigers. Dragons and Tigers. Oh. So, um, sorry for you, Dragons and Tigers fans. I just think that they didn't really recruit well. And the Tigers, last round, we all know how it ended for them. Yeah. And um, their, their new logo, I just do not like it. The new logo, it's just, it just sure. doesn't vibe for me. Yeah. Like, they got rid of the claw. Like, like who does that? <laughs> yeah. And, and with the Dragons, they they started out last season okay. They were in the top four after the win over Parramatta, but in the season they just fallen off. Like I don't know whatever's going on with the Dragons, but they've just seemed to like just not gone. They've seen the gone south. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I think of the Dragons, like I think of them, you know, like being the eight. You know, I think of like Jamie Stow, You know, um. Window. The Morris brothers, um, Craig Gower, I think of all of those dudes. Yeah. I was just wondering for another question. Obviously, big is Jackson Hastings, big signing for the ties. It's pretty controversial. It's who's – some people love it, some people hate it. What are your thoughts on it? He's an okay player, but if we want to get his potential, he will hopefully will lead the ties and show Luke, Luke Brooks the ropes more. Because Luke Brooks, I think, has just had it. He's like he's trying his hardest, but he's getting he's trying his hard, but he just can't hit that level. But hopefully, if Jackson Hastings helps him, he might be able to reach more. Yeah, yeah for sure. And and the thing is with Luke Brooks is he's always the one that gets the blame if the team loses. <laughs> that must be pretty tough on his confidence. Yeah, but we and apparently Mumbai's also a captain, and um, obviously there's obviously something going on between Brooks and um, Mumbai as well. They're obviously not communicating enough as well because earlier this season, um, early last season, when they got absolutely hammered by um, the Melbourne Storm, it's at such a coast, it showed them. It just showed them what type of a team they're turning into now. Yeah. I mean, like, the halftime score was 40 nil. Yeah. It was... One that's, player that's... that I hope that has a big... Um, Return this year is another halfback, Ash Taylor. Sign with my Warriors. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, and with Sean Joshin going back to the Warriors, oh, that look, I'm actually looking forward to actually seeing how the Warriors go because yeah, I've got huge respect for the Warriors who over the last few seasons they've had to sacrifice so much. I've got huge respect for them. So to the Warriors, if you're listening out there, which I'm pretty sure you do, I respect you. Keep up the good work, guys, and I'm pretty sure you definitely will get a premiership in the next coming years. Let's go. 
Yeah, for sure. And back to back to the Dragons. Um, you said they didn't recruit well. Do you not rate um Jaden Sewer, George Burgess, Aaron Woods, Moses Mbai? They they don't. All they don't Aaron Woods. All Aaron Woods does is it's just run. It's just run with his ass. That's all he does. <laughs> 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 like if he's seen how he runs, he just runs backwards with his ass. George Burgess is definitely a good recruit. And Mumbai, he's been hot on hot, hot and cold at the Tigers. Bulldogs, he was really good, but hopefully he can definitely bring something to the Dragons. Yeah, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. So it's a tough question to ask because I feel like there's a lot of people saying for the Broncos. A lot of people could say fifth. A lot of people could say fourteenth. What do you think about the Broncos recruitment this year? They've definitely got a big one in Adam Reynolds for sure. That's a big one. Um, South Sydney, they were super for letting him go. Um, he's been like a junior ever since he can remember. He's played for them forever. Um, I'd probably say they're probably around all oh, the pens. For me, I don't know. Yeah, I'm still tossing in turn between them, but Adam Reynolds is definitely a big key. But it's going to be odd for him playing up in Brisbane a lot when he's been majority of his career has been in Sydney. Yeah, for but sure. I, I personally reckon, reckon, reckon they're going to get like 10 to 20. will do something for them. I definitely reckon he will definitely will boost up Brisbane for sure. And we're also, we've talked about Adam Reynolds quite a bit. Uh, obviously, they signed Kurt Capel from Penrith as well. Do you rate him as a signing? Yeah, he's, def- yeah, he's definitely a good player, Kurt Capel. He did phenomenal for um, Penrith last season. Um, he's definitely a good player. Um, he can play in his position very, very well, for sure. Yeah. And obviously this year, going away from the NRL, 2022 is a World Cup year. Do you see Australia dominance in that or New Zealand? Or who do you think? It depends, though. But Australia, I, I can definitely see Australia and New Zealand dominating that. Yeah. They've got some really, really good players. I know, I'm pretty sure... Um, Pengo Jr. will probably will play for the Australia, but I'm pretty sure he will. But they will probably will dominate because they got a lot of good players, real a lot of lot of good players. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, have you watched the NRL Auckland and World Nines, and what do you think of that concept? Um, I like it, but some of the jerseys designs and they, they need to be a little bit more creative. Yeah, like with um. Like with the sharkies, that um the sharkies be like the sharky head, that that was good. They need to be more creative. Like they need to bring that back, but have it for like um the juniors. So like so, so like for an example, so for like um like the Canterbury Cup players who don't get much experience, or like the feeder clubs for each of the teams who don't have much experience in footy, have them play so they can see how they feel about it. They should definitely should bring that back. I don't know if you watch NBA, but they have like a concept like the city jerseys. We like yeah, I see. Yeah. I reckon that's what they should bring. I reckon they'll be sick for the NRL, but it might be hard because there's so many Sydney teams and stuff. But like a New Zealand one would be sick. Like something to do with your city. I reckon that'd be quite cool. Or yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So obviously, um, you talked a bit. We've seen your TikToks. Are you you're a bit into WWE, right? Yeah, but I don't watch it anymore. I used to be a diehard wrestling fan back in the day, but now I just don't watch it anymore because it's it's just the same old bull crap. Um, pretty much half of the roster is gone. The Royal Rumble's coming up, and I've actually got some really good matches too. I'm actually looking forward to. Um, for the first time ever, you're gonna see Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley for a WWE title. Oh, yeah. I remember watching be, the and, back and, in the day. This, yeah, and in this match, it's so old. You got the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns versus Seth Friggin Rollins for the Universal Title. The old Shield teammates. Let's go. Bring back the Shield. Yeah, bring them back. They yeah, but they won't bring back the Shield because WWE just doesn't know how they use their talent. Yeah, I reckon like the yeah. factions are cool. I reckon that's like I love when like a big faction comes and you like love to hate them and stuff. But they get all the I I missed um I missed when I had um evolution the white family 
But they've let go so much Ross the talent. It's just unbelievable. They've even even um Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Roderick Strong hasn't gone yet, but um Carla Riley and Adam Cole have gone all gone to AEW. Yeah, and that's like Chris Jericho, Dean Ambrose, Cody Rhodes, eh? All those fellas have gone. Yeah, I've gone too. CM Punk. Yeah, CM Punk. He, he's an AEW, yeah. Yeah. Oh, one, you one... should have seen you should have seen his um pipe bomb with um MJF. Um I I'll give you some of the things he said. He is like I MJF just stands for my jealous fan. Boom. That's what you do. And then at, and then he was like, CM Punk's like to MJF. In reality, he's such a less famous Miz. Oh, oh I saw that. <laughs> and then I don't know if you know who Britt Baker is in AEW. I don't know. Nah. Um, I think she's Cody Rhodes' wife. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He goes, Britt, he, she, um, Britt Baker's become more famous than him. Oh. <laughs> Disaster. Yeah, it's a... Who's your yeah, favorite but... wrestler of all time? My favorite wrestler? Yeah, from WWE. Mine was always um... Cena of all time. Cena. It would have yeah. to be Cena from yeah. 2002. He's a 16 time WWE champion. He needs to break the record. Um, I can't find anyone else. Cena is just one of those guys from the kids, like around my. I know, I know there are a lot of people who listen to this podcast. There's a lot of kids around like my age who used to watch wrestling and Cena was like one of their top favorites, like Rey Mysterio and Batista. Definitely Undertale. Cena for me. Undertale, Undertale was one of my favorite. Uh, uh, yeah. But he oh, was, I saw him. Like I, year, um, you're going to be jealous of me because I saw him live in Melbourne. Really? I went, I went to the Super Showdown in Melbourne. That's sick. Because Connor and I always went to the ones in Auckland, but it was always like random people that would come to Auckland. Like it was this was like 10 years ago when we were like real into it. John Cena went once, didn't he, Connor? And Jack Swan. Yeah. Yeah. A few other yeah. yeah. yeah my saw... favorite. My favorite was always the Miz and Sabu. <laughs> oh, Sabu, uh, the guy from um ECW who used yeah. to do everything with like the chairs and that. His match against Ric Flair at SummerSlam. I don't know what SummerSlam. And he like buffs him over his shoulders onto the thumbtacks. Have you seen that? Oh. <laughs> that oh, is really <laughs> Good memory. Yeah. What, years were, what, what years were you guys were born in? Because I know the 10 I'm on the comp that year. Um, we're both born 2002 and I know because my team lost the grand final that year. Brewsters uh, beat the Warriors 30 to 6. So or 30 to 8. What can you name like all of them from what from what, 2001 what? until last year? Can't do it. You don't you have to do the score, you can just say the team, okay? Or... Okay, uh so 01 Newcastle claimed their second premiership with a 30 to 24 win over Parramatta. 03 Penrith defeated uh the Roosters 18 6 got Salah did that try saving tackle. Yeah. Said yep. Oh uh, four, Canterbury defeated the Roosters 16-13 after their child half time 6-13. Oh five, the Tigers had the first premiership with a 30-16 win over the Cowboys. Benjamin Marsh did that thick pass to Pat Richards. Yeah. Oh six, Brisbane defeated the Storm 15-8. Oh seven and oh eight, um, Melbourne Storm defeated Manly in an 0-8. Manly flogged to Melbourne 40 new, and I believe that was um Steve Menti's final game. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh 2009 Melbourne defeated Parramatta 23-16, but Melbourne cheated the salary cap that year. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. 20, 2010, uh Dragons defeated the Roosters 32-8. 2011, Manly defeated the Warriors. 2012. Canterbury lost to Melbourne 14-4 when that whole fight with James Graham and Billy Slater happened when James Graham bit Billy Slater's ear. Yeah, dogs of war. Yeah. <laughs> 2013, Roosters defeated Manly when Michael Jennings did that freaky Superman try. And in 2013, Sunday Bill came back and won the Cotton of Roosters that year. We all know 2014, South defeated yeah. Canterbury 30-6. <laughs> 2015 was that golden point thriller between the Broncos and the Cowboys. Probably one, probably my second 
FA favourite grand final when the Cowboys won by one. The year after that, Cronulla claimed their first premiership with a 14-12 win over Melbourne Storm and Andrew Profita scored the try to put the Sharks in the lead. The year after that, uh, Melbourne defeated the Cowboys 34-6. <laughs> 2018, 2019, Roosters went back to back, 21-6 over Melbourne, and then a 14-8 win over Canberra and a controversial six again call. Yeah. 2020, uh, Penrith lost to Melbourne Storm 26-20 after they led after they trailed 20 nil at halftime. And we all know this year, 14-12 Penrith over Sousney. Stephen Kynan grabbed the intercept try, and I believe Alex Shotton scored the final try. Wow. There you I, go. That's impressive, yeah. I, I thought I was good, like, knowing, like, the last 10 years' winners, and then you've got the scores, who they played. Like, how do you know that? Is it just, like, you just watch so much? Yeah, I, and I've also known some other crazy games, too, that I'll also mention later on. Sweet, yeah. Let's go. But is it just, like, you can just remember stuff like that, or, like, that's... Yeah, like, like there, there are, like, certain games in certain years I can, like, I know that Penrith created history... Last in 2020, I know we created history, the Bulldogs created history in 2014. There are certain things I know from teams. That's so sick. Like, do you just have like a good memory, or do you kind of watch the games? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a good memory. Okay, I'll, I'll give one out here right now. Right now, um, the 2007 Broncos were under strength, they defeated Newcastle 71 to 6. Wow, don't know if you remember that one. No, I'm a bit yeah. young. Sorry, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it was just crazy. Like when you were talking about them, because we only started this podcast like four to five months ago. And quite a lot of them, like we talked to people about certain grand finals. Like we talked to Joe yeah. Galavau about 2003 grand final, Shane Flanagan about the 2015 grand final, Dynamis Louie about the 20, what was it? You know, Jason? 2019, I think. 2018. 2019. What was the Raiders grand final? 2019 20 yeah 2019 yeah so it's just crazy like you learn to like pick up stuff like that but for you to know those is crazy just mentioning how you mentioned Sunnyville a lot of Bulldogs fans hate Sunnyville are you fine with them now or look I still agree with I still you know do you know I still you know still don't understand why they hate him because my mum loved him um my mum loved him um she um got a little figurine. It was like doing an action, and he signed it. And he walked down on the club in two thousand or two thousand and seven, whatever year he walked down, and that was definitely more heartbreaking. That was definitely heartbreaking. But um, I still do agree on how the Brooks fans feel, but mm-hmm. I have sort of have forgiven him a little bit. Yeah, but not much. Yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> There's, there's another thing I wanted to talk about, Jason. It's a bit off topic, but I saw that you went to um, Yisra's uh, meetup. Yeah, meeting group. Yeah. How, how was it? Yeah, she's nice. Um, her and Castro were not dating. It was all for clout. Really? Yeah. Um, and um, Castro's also a doctor supporter. So I know Castro's out there. Um, Castro, just keep in faith with the doggies, man. They'll come back up again. But yes, right, she's really, really nice. She's really, really nice. Yeah. If if you ever say Castro, if you ever see him, just say, kind of says you're a flog. <laughs> okay. okay. Just, sweet. J- Jason, okay. I really wanted this. But can I get one, go the, go the Bulldogs? Is that possible? I'll do it when we... I'll do it when we finish this podcast. Okay. Because <laughs> how many followers uh, followers are you on on TikTok now? It's insane. I've got I'm fifty eight thousand eight hundred and twenty eight. Wow. Damn. And what started? So you just want to talk about? Um. Well, my mum when we went to the South and Canterbury game, when we saying go Bulldogs, but then I blew up a second time was after the loss to the Cowboys. I was saying, like, I'm going to stick by the Bulldogs no matter what. And um, and that's made me blow up. But I've got my member's jersey and my name's on it. Yeah. So I'll just get an ultra straight up. So pretty much um, 
I was looking on the Bulldogs website and basically all of the members who um, pledged their membership to the club got their name on this. That's sick. Oh, damn. Yeah. Have you, have you yeah, found your name? On it. It's on the back. But that's basically all of the members who have pledged their membership to the club well, last that's year. That's sick. So yeah. I'm, I'm, there was obviously a thing going around um, on your TikTok where people were saying that you're a Panthers fan. What was the <laughs> what was the go with that? Yeah, um, I wasn't a Panthers supporter. I was just supporting them for the grand final. Yeah. That Panthers oh. jersey I brought back when they had when Penrith had Matt Moylan back when um the Bulldogs signed um Josh Morris's brother Brett Morris back then. I was only supporting the Panthers for a day. That may be controversial to all the Bulldog supporters out there, but majority of the Bulldog supporters were probably were going for Penrith because half of the Canterbury supporters don't like Souths. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's completely fair if your team doesn't make the grand final, you pick someone to support. I think that's just the way it goes because then you've got someone to back on grand final day. Yeah, but... Penrith deserved it because they just started the season out like a juggernaut. They had 12 wins. Yeah. And then, and then they just... And then and then they um they played South Sydney like they were nothing. Like, I think it was like 56-12 at Dubbo. They were just, they were, Penrith, whatever they've got on their junior system, they are really, really good. And I've got a friend, her brother is in a Panthers junior system, um, Keegan Ru- Ru- Russell Smith. He plays for the SJ Ball and the Howard Matthews um, team. But they've got a really, really good junior system. That's why Penrith have been the way they've gone for the last two seasons. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I saw a TikTok, I don't know if it was recently of you, when, um, it might have been ages ago, actually, when you, like, went to Parramatta with a Bulldogs jersey on and you're like, this is hostile territory, but I don't care. Is that, like, a big rivalry? Like, what are the big rivalries for the Bulldogs? Uh, well, Bulldogs and Parra, definitely. Um, Bulldogs Roosters, for sure. Bulldogs Dragons. Bulldogs. Um, so, so we've got Parramatta. We've got definitely Manly. We've got the Roosters, Dragons, and we've got Souths. Yeah, because back in back in the olden days, Bulldogs and how so basically how Melbourne and Penrith were this last year. That's what Bulldogs and the Roosters were back then. Back in the day, they were like top at the top at that of the game. We've definitely had some really, really, really good clashes over the years with those games. And I'm actually going to mention this to you guys. Actually, I find it's really, really odd. We actually don't play the Dragons on the Queen's Birthday Clash. Guess who we play? Who? Parramatta. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and what? how is this? And I don't know, but how is this for a game? Round 12 this year at Belmore Sports Ground, Bulldogs, the Dragons. How is oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be the, are you going to go to it? Yeah, I'm, I'm a Bulldogs member, so I'll be going to that one for sure. Yeah. What? That's the one thing I miss because I live in Wellington and obviously the Warriors are normally in Auckland. So I, I only get to probably go to one home game a year, but it looks like the experience at the ground is amazing, eh? Yeah, I went to the game when we defeated um, Newcastle, Bulldogs and Worcester Josh Reynolds. That game was, Belmore is definitely a nice ground, but it needs to be upgraded more. That's definitely one game I'm looking forward to is Dogs and Dragons at Belmore. One game I'm definitely am looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. So the the game that I went to that had the biggest atmosphere was the Tonga versus Kiwis. What would you say was the game that had the biggest atmosphere that you've been to? Uh, 2012 prelim final, Canterbury South. When we when we won that one 32-8, uh, Adam Reynolds tore his hamstring in that game. And the final try was Greg Inglis doing that try. That was probably the biggest one I've been to. That had about eighty odd thousand. Jeez. Well, it's Canterbury and South. Yeah, it is. And it was a prelim. Yeah. In twenty twelve, that was that was definitely a good match because I. 
that was definitely a good match. That was probably one of the best I've been to. Yeah. I just think Rob I actually cried again. when we lost to Melbourne and the, the following week. I came home crying when we lost to Melbourne. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was devastated. Yeah. And if you guys want, we can talk about the last few years about the Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah, 100%. We'll, we'll just keep going until the Zoom stops yeah. and start again. So no, no worries. Yeah. Um, one thing I was going to say is that, like, the one thing that annoy- not annoys me, but it's like all these other teams, like the Cowboys, Connors team has the Broncos as their big rival. The, the Warriors don't really have a big rival, I would say. Like, we do have, like, a little rivalry against the Storm, but it's like we don't have, like, a t- cross-town rival, you know, which it's like... Yeah, the- they need to have a cross-town rival. They need, they need to have a cross-town rival. The like, um, team, the, the Wellington team. Yeah, like... Uh, I'd say probably my best match I've seen I've probably seen from the Royals was when they did when John Johnson did that step to beat Cronulla and I think Golden Point. Yes, yeah, that was a good. Yeah, I was with um, my other podcast, the other podcast host Liam that night, and he was like giving me so much shit. You guys suck. You can't even beat the Sharks, and then Johnson just went through all. I think of I it. was pouring down two that day. Yes, yeah, it was because it was real slippery, and they all like slipped, and he just came in. Yeah, and and, and you had someone coming with Buddy. Someone in the crowd was wearing a freaking scuba gear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what you love about the game, eh? Like, there's so many like yeah, so many good stories every year. That's what I love about it, you know. Mm. I'm just trying to, because it's tough as a Warriors fan. Cause it's like. Yeah, I think a lot of teams think they can beat us easily, and that's like an issue that we have is that we're mentally a bit weak, I find, which is sort of frustrating at games where we should win, but we lose, you know? What the Warriors need to do is they need to have the old players come back and help them train. Yes, yeah, because that's what the Bulldogs are doing with Willie, yeah. Yeah, um, he's the reason why Pango Jr. and Paul Vaughan came to the club. Really? Yes, he's a reason. I was listening. Um, I was watching on Twitter, and he said he's a reason why, um, he brought them in to the club. Oh, really? That's, yeah. Uh, when you can get players like that, eh, that recruit, you know. Yeah. Well, obviously, Big Willie knows what he likes and the players, and obviously, he definitely wants to see the club that us Canterbury fans want to see back in the eight. Because when you think of the Bulldogs, you think of them right as a top eight side. You don't think of them as a bottom eight side. Hundred percent. So obviously there was that um, dynamic duo of the Morris brother and Ben Barber. What was it like watching them every week? Oh, um, watching the Morris brothers, you know, combined, um, that was really, really good. Um, when um, Josh Morris or Brett Morris returned from an injury, we defeated the Brisbane. I feel like 40 to 16 or 40 to 10. Um and he scored like four tries that game. It was really, really good to see the Morris brothers combine. And Ben Barber, definitely was definitely good to see Ben Barber and, and um Josh Morris combine. I wasn't watching the game, but I remember we played uh back in 2012, Melbourne at Mackay, and Ben Barber kicked the ball to Josh Morris, and Josh Morris did um, the flip try. Yeah, 